she shouldn't be rewarded for, for failure, frankly. I would hope that she'd have the wherewithal to uh, hand it back um, herself. Yeah, so I was Postal Affairs Minister from February 2020, about a month before lockdown, because uh, I also covered small businesses, hospitality, retail, British Business Bank, and another a number of other areas. But it was shortly after the court case that listeners would have seen on that drama, uh, the, uh, the denouement of that drama, the last scene when Alan Bates was writing out an email to the Postal Affairs Minister, that was me, uh, with the invoice that he wanted paying. I was able to open the compensation process. It's still going on. It's still taking way too long. And that's what we've got to keep uh, the current Postal Affairs Minister, Kevin Hollerake, his feet to the fire on that. And I also set up the inquiry as well that's still going through, that's led by a judge, that's looking for the answers about who knew what, where, so we can get that accountability mm. as well. Why is it taking so long? I mean, to be fair, it is complicated. There were, if I had my time again, I would have brought it in house so that I dealt with it in the department, taking it away from the post office. I don't try to have one uh, compensation scheme. What you've basically got is three different threads. So anybody that lost out financially but didn't go through that course, court case or was convicted, we had a sort of a PPI style approach when the post office advertised says, "Have you been affected by this? You can apply for compensation." There were people like Joe Hamilton, again, that featured heavily in that, in that drama series, who was convicted of a crime. You can't compensate people with a conviction, so they've got to get those convictions quashed first, and they, they're going through a process. And then the 555 people that were in Alan Bates's court case, they're at a disadvantage because they had a full and final settlement, most of which was swallowed up by legal fees. So they've uh, gone without uh, so that others can actually then pursue their cases. Yeah, and I don't want to be flippant about this at all because there is absolutely no place for that in such a, um, you know, a serious course of events. But, you know, we do live in an age of technology and you would imagine that maybe technology can speed up that process. I mean, for, for these individuals to have to wait for a conviction to be quashed in order to then get further compensation, uh, just, I mean, it really is insult to injury, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But it's to be fair, it's not sort of about that kind of process. It's um, it's literally the post office have this oddity that they are, are a prosecuting authority themselves. It predates modern government. It some, dates back to something like Henry VIII when the forebear of the post office had that kind of power. So should that be changed? Could yeah, that absolutely. be be changed yeah. by a simple act of parliament, actually? Yeah, and that's what uh, the Ministry of, Minister of Justice, Secretary of State for Justice, Alex Chalk and Kevin Holloway, the current Postal Affairs Minister, are talking about today. There are 90-odd uh, uh, people who have had their convictions quashed, but that's out of 700. Yeah. So there are votes to go. And so, yeah, absolutely, if we can do a blanket quashing of those convictions, then that just makes stuff so much easier. And it also means that those people don't have to go back to court these are the people, you know, these are people that have no faith in authority, understandably so. So what they need now is actions. They don't need warm words from me or any other politician. They want people just mm. to act on their behalf, say, you're not convicted anymore. Now here's the money that you richly deserve. Can we talk about culpability? Uh, if we can run through some people uh, who definitely need to take some kind of responsibility for this, I don't know whether you would be allowed to sign the petition that uh, is going round. I think nearly a million people have to take away the CBE from Paula Venels. What do you think to that? I think, first of all, she, she, I'd hope that she'd have the wherewithal to uh, hand it back um, herself. I think with, the, with um, otherwise, she shouldn't be rewarded for, for failure frankly. What I would say, though, is whilst the inquiry is still going through, whether it's Paula Reynolds and you're going to read a load of other uh, people, Fujitsu, uh, some of the other post office um, senior management, uh, they actually do need to be held to account. But I think you need that process of the inquiry rather than just relying on a four hour, ex albeit excellent drama series to then say these people knew this at what point these people can then be held culpable and there's already evidence apparently that uh, people are saying there's evidence that coming through the inquiry that's enough to uh, for the cps to be interested in 
Right, OK. And we wouldn't want to say anything that would uh, prejudice those outcomes at all. Uh, I wonder what you think, though, of some of your parliamentary colleagues' role in all of this. I mean, it does seem extraordinary that Alan Bates, uh, one of the sub-postmasters, had to write to, I think it was five ministers, wasn't it, over the course of seven years to yeah. even get a response from the minister in charge. What would you say to those people who simply ignored the emails, told him he wasn't worth their time? What would you like them to hear today? I think they need to know, um, they need to know this is the role of not only being a minister, this is the role of being human first, politician second, to actually understand that by the time you had a number of convictions, it was clear, surely, that this can't just be a whole load of fraudsters queuing up to defraud the post office, to steal from the post office. There must have been something systemic. And it's the job of a minister, it's the job of a leader to to ask the right questions and to listen to people. So the more people you can listen to away from the Westminster mm. bubble, the but, better. Sure, Actually, but it's very, got, it's very yeah, interesting, sorry. Mr Scully. I mean, let's just nail this down. Ed Davey does seem like a very, very human politician. You know, here is a man who really sets out his stall uh, on taking care of, you know, perhaps you know, what we might pejoratively call the little people across the country. So what was it about this? What was it about the kind of political climate or the power of the post office or the power of technology that meant somebody like that couldn't see what was happening? Look, I don't, it's 10 years before I took the role. It was five years before I was MP. So I do want to second, I don't want to second judge him. There were, there were three different parties involved in this, uh, political parties, Labour, Liberal and Conservative, that all oversaw various parts of, um, of this travesty. So I'm not going to get party political about it. I'm just saying that it's the role of the minister to ask difficult questions, to probe, don't just take the first thing. What actually happened? Because I, I had the same thing, although I had the benefit of the court case, the judgment there sitting in front of me. So I was in a different position to Ed. I was still in um, a position where people were saying, no, it's done and dusted now, but that wasn't enough for me. So I, I actually picked up the phone to Alan Bates at the end and said, right, how are we going to sort this out? That's what I think finally cut through officialdom to get through that human nature. Yeah. So I don't think I can judge Ed, but, but, but I'm just saying that it's a contrast, I think, of ministerial... It's how to be a minister, and it's it's, it's my first and one example. Sure. Do you I'm worry, not. and you must have had this conversation with yourself, that actually if it had been you in position yeah. 10 years previously, you might have been the minister who said, no, I'm going to believe the post Absolutely. office. Yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, we get things, uh, it could well have been me. That's why, I'm, you know, I don't want to push too, too, too heavily in it because we get uh, things in our constitu constituency casework that we have to pick and choose which ones are the things that we think have got legs and which one we think might be a little bit more vexatious or or other concerns. All I would say with someone like Ed and uh, Ed Davey and other ministers is that when we as constituency MPs write to a minister, I'd expect the minister to act the way that I'm, you know, in, uh, pushing them to do. I'd hope that I would react in the same way, saying that I've got this constituent, please take it seriously. Mm. Uh, final question, and then we need to let you go, I know. I mean, the ITV drama, I think, is remarkable, and millions of people who've watched it think it's remarkable too. It's really touched the nation, but it does say something quite bad, doesn't it, about the power of politicians, that it takes a drama for injustice to be not righted, because I know that a process was in place before but for injustice to really be revealed for what it is. Yeah, I think to be fair, it's not... Um, the senior politicians and the ministers that are involved in it have been ensconced in this for two years, trying to get through the complexity of the, the, just not the, just the process, but the fact that so many people in, with different circumstances. But of course, what it does, um, this is... You, you can sit there and look at the various media uh, coverage. It's happened over 20 years. This was a four-hour, very intense document, um, almost documentary, uh, to the point that it said at the beginning of every series, or every episode, saying this is a true story. You almost needed to put that on the beginning of every advert break because it was that intense. So I think it's just brought it home to the public eye. We always know how difficult it is to keep these kind of stories in the public uh, eye, and including politicians, backbench. Uh, politicians, but I think government has been acting. But I think what this has done is allowed them to redouble their efforts. Mm. And I'm going shortly to the chamber 
to make sure the current postal minister does exactly that. 